thank you for joining us today for our Utilizing Analytical Data for Reliability with PSPICE demo. My name is Brianna and I will be moderating this event. And to get started, let's address a few logistics. Everyone's mic is muted throughout our time together. If you have any questions, please ask them within the questions pane. We will have a representative answering questions as well as a Q&A at the end. Elias Huntemick will be our presenter today. Elias is an electrical engineer based in the Rochester, New York home office. She has been with EMA since June 2019. Her focus is in circuit design, spice simulation, and design data management. So with that being said, over to you, Elias. Thank you, Brianna. This seminar will mostly be focused on the SMOKE tool, which is now available in PSPICE AD, but we will also touch on the other tools available at, in the PSPICE suite to increase reliability in your circuit at the end of the demo. The SMOKE tool evaluates if a circuit is operating within safe operating conditions. This tool is designed to increase long-term reliability by warning of stress due to power dissipation, increase in junction temperature, secondary breakdowns, and violations of voltage or current limits. Though you can likely not test 10,000 different prototypes, you can simulate your circuits with virtual prototyping. Being able to test the reliability of your circuit at the simulation level allows you to choose the best components available. Stress parts can cause components to fail, or more seriously, overcurrent and overvoltage in a circuit can cause the circuit to overheat or become a shock or a fire hazard. Even if caught at the prototype stage, overstressed parts can cost time and reworks uh, and money. Using PSPICE, you can compare lots of different parts with different values from different manufacturers in minutes using the PSPICE libraries. Using the SMOKE tool, you can easily test your entire circuit for stress, including designer assigned D ratings. How can this help? Seeing the stress level put on your parts can help you to determine the optimal parts for your circuit and prevent failure in the field. Recalls or mass product failure can lose your company money or cost reputation. In our demo today, we will use the RF amplifier found in Cadence Demo Designs. Before you can use the smoke tool, there are a few things that you need to do to prepare your circuit. You need to make sure that your PSPICE parts have smoke properties. Many parts in the PSPICE library already have these properties. Looking at the properties of our resistor, we can see that it already has some of these variables as properties such as RT max, RM max, um, that are variables that we have assigned in our smoke. Our smoke limits here are assigned using the part variable, which can be found uh, in your piece by search. So here you can get the part variable, and that way we can assign our resistors and our capacitors and our inductors with smoke limits all at once rather than having to do them one at a time. So this variable correlates to the properties that we saw in the property editor. PSPICE also contains a few other blocks that are similar to this one. You can assign variables such as global tolerances or parameters. Here, using the parameter block also found in the PSPICE library, we can assign global tolerances to our parts. Next, before you run the smoke tool, you will also need to run a transient simulation. In our transient simulation, we can see the peak of our transistor. However, it would be difficult to do this for each part one at a time in a larger circuit. This is often where people start to cut corners. Maybe they only test a couple of the parts, maybe ones that they think are the most likely to cause issues rather than testing all of the parts in their circuit. Smoke will help you to evaluate your entire circuit at once. And then we can also see our smoke properties in parts like our transient part. You can do this by going to edit piece by model, which I've already opened. And you can see the smoke parameters here. If for some reason your model doesn't have any smoke parameters, maybe you made the model yourself or you would like to add smoke parameters to one that doesn't, you can go to model, add smoke. 
and you'll be able to add the smoke parameters that you would like. These parameters are often found on the data sheets of your components. Smoke will help you to evaluate your entire circuit at once. Now that we've run our transient analysis, we can run smoke. So smoke can be found up here in the corner, or we can find it by going to PSPICE, Advanced Analysis, Smoke. Once we've run our smoke tool, our PSPICE Advanced Analysis window will pop up. The smoke tool uses the maximum operating conditions supplied by vendors and can use derating factors supplied by the designer to calculate its safe operating conditions. Smoke will display average, RMS, and peak values in your circuit. It will flag components that are likely to fail when run near or above their rating. Using the options in analysis smoke, we can sort our, our parameters to be able to see maybe only our power or our current parameters. Here we can also, under analysis smoke, uh, look at our parameter descriptions. If you don't know what these parameter abbreviations mean, we can extend them so that we can see the entire parameter description. We can also hide invalid rows. These are measurements that don't have an RMS value, such as temperature. So we can hide those rows that aren't relevant to us so that we can see only the information that is relevant in our circuit. We can also add designer derating. You can create your own derating or you can use the standard derating. To add a derating file, you can add your files from here or create a new derating file. We're going to use the standard derating. Once you run it again, you can see that although this passed when we used just the vendor specifications that once we added our derating value in, uh, it no longer passed. So the smoke tool warned us that this was a part that was going to be uh, likely to fail or was under a lot of stress. You'll also see in your derating tool, sometimes they'll be yellow if they're close, but not terrible. Um, or you'll see red if they're close to failing. When you add your derating, make sure to press play again or it will not work. We can click on this particular one that has its derating and we can find it within the design so that we can change it in real time immediately to be something that would not fail or would be a part that would be not under stress. This tool can be used to help designers detect breakdown voltages across device terminals, max current limits, power dissipation for each component, secondary breakdown limits of transistors, or junction temperatures. Smoke can be used as a quick power check in your design or in conjunction with other advanced analysis tools to be a final design check. Now we're gonna take a look at some other tools that PSPICE contains. PSPICE Advanced Analysis contains more tools that can help you to increase the reliability of your circuit. These performance analysis tools are available in some of the higher tiers of PSPICE, although there are versions of Monte Carlo and worst case analysis that are available in PSPICE AD. In order to run some of the other analysis, we need to run also an AC sweep. So we'll run our AC sweep and then we have our measurements here that we will also use. From your top or from where you were, you can open the advanced analysis tools. You can go to view, and here we can run a sensitivity. In our circuit, we have the global tolerances that we looked at that were used adding the param block from the library. When we run the sensitivity analysis, the sensitivity analysis uses the measurements that we found in our AC suite to evaluate the circuit response. It will show the parameters value at nominal, max, and minimum, and it shows how the bandwidth is affected by these changes. Monte Carlo can be used in conjunction with this. There is a type of Monte Carlo that is available in PSPICE AD regularly that you can use to evaluate individual components. 
Monte Carlo simulations are fairly simple. They define the probability distribution for component values in a simple DC or frequency sweep. Though these simulations can be time consuming when you're running hundreds of them, as I ran this earlier since there were 100 runs, it didn't take too long, but it takes longer than two seconds. So uh, we can now see the histogram produced that will show the range of electrical values to help determine performance and reliability in our circuits. We can also use the optimizer in conjunction with sensitivity as well. The optimizer will do the manual tweaking for you of your selected components automatically based on goals that you have inputted. So using the sensitivity, it will optimize all of your parts that you have selected to have their optimal value that you can use in your circuits. It will change those values and you can use those to have your most optimized circuit. Using these tools, you can increase the reliability of your circuit. Being able to test the reliability of your circuit at this level, rather than waiting for the prototype level or worse, when it gets into the field, we can prevent things like recalls of electronics that we remember maybe failing for having parts that were stressed too much and becoming hazards like fire hazards or smoke hazards. Uh, we can catch some of those things at this level by running all sorts of different tests to ensure the reliability of our circuits rather than waiting to find that out until it's too late. Thank you, Brianna. I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Alaya. And at this time, I would like to open the floor up for the Q&A. So please enter any questions you have into the chat now. And your first question is, do I need a special license to run smoke analysis? No, you don't. Smoke is now available uh, in PSPICE AD. So as long as you have PSPICE uh, in your license, and that includes EE Designer, then Smoke will be included in your uh, PSPICE now. Great, thank you. The next question is, what kind of models will work with Smoke Analysis? So, um, any of the models will work with these spice analysis. Most of your models already have smoke included, uh, but if they do not have smoke included, you can add smoke by going to edit P spice model. Sky will pop up and if smoke parameters are included, you'll see this tab here that says smoke parameters. If not, you can add them by going to model add smoke to any of your models. Great, thank you. Our next question is, what does the customer derating file look like? Absolutely, so if you'd like to add in uh, your own derating files rather than using the standard derating, uh, you can go in to analysis smoke derating, and then you can choose to add a derating file or create your own derating file. If you're adding a derating file, these are ASCII files, or you can create or edit one that already exists. So if you'd like to create one, you can create it here, um, and you can add whatever derating factors you would like in this window. Great, thank you. Our next question is, can I measure more than one maximum operating point on a component? Yes, you can do that. Um, a lot of these are already have their multiple uh, max points, so you can do your maximum power or voltage, um, depending on what you'd like to see. Uh, so you can use any of these parameters and measure any of those points. Thank you. Let's see what else we have. I have no derating on, but my resistors are not at 100%. Why is that? Um, so it will default automatically to be at a specific point. So if you don't have any derating on at all, they're always going to default to that. Okay, thank you. 
And we have another question here. Is there a maximum number of components that smoke can handle? Not that anybody is going to reach. So you can run very, very large um, schematics or circuits on this and not have a problem with reaching the component limits. Great, thank you. So at this time, if there aren't any other questions, we'll wrap up our demonstration today. And this video or recording will be recorded and we will be sending out an email with the recording available if you would like to view this again or pass it on to someone else who you may think will find it useful. And with that being said, thank you, Aliyah, and thank you to everyone who attended. Thank you, Brianna, and thank you, everybody, for coming.